Now we can begin. It was a very long time ago, on an icy, cold winter's night. Just like tonight. Perfect for mischief. If you happen to be king of the hobgoblins. <laughs> with a plan to make a magnificent magic mirror. which will bring misery and misfortune to good, kind people the world over. <laughs> and what did the Hobgoblin King do with this mirror he had made? <laughs> the magic mirror was shattered into hundreds of millions of tiny fragments. They were born on the four winds and scattered all over the world, causing unhappiness in every land. For when one of these tiny shards of mirror lodged in a person's eye, oh. Oh. <laughs> she could only see the worst side of everything she looked at. Even the tiniest sliver exerted the same magical power as the whole mirror would have done. Some unfortunate people even got a fragment in their heart. Oh. 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 drifted on the air for years to come. And now, you shall hear what happened with just one or two of them. In large towns, most people have only a few flower pots for a garden. But here lived two poor children who had something much better. Kai and Gerda were not brother and sister, but they loved each other just as much. Summer and autumn, they could be together with one little hop from their windows. But winter was a different story. <laughs> oh, no more jigsaws, Kai. You always finish them before I've had a chance to get started. Sorry, Gerda. Can't help it. I'm just good at puzzles, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's not fair, Grandma. It's almost like the snow wants to stop me and Gerda playing in our garden. Ah, yes. Those old snow bees are awful spoil sports when they're swarming. Snow bees, Grandma? Do they have a queen like honeybees do? Oh, of course they do, dear. Right in the thick of the swarm she flies. And the snow bees swarm round her because the coldness of her heart stops them melting when uh, spring arrives. Have you ever seen her, Grandma? Well, come midnight, she often flies through the streets of the town, looking in through the windows. Her gaze is so cold, it can turn a person's breath to ice on the inside of their window. The Snow Queen couldn't get in here, could she? Oh, I shouldn't think so, dear. It's far too toasty warm for her. <laughs> I'd like to see her try, Gerda, because if she did, I'd protect you. Oh. I'd push her on the stove and then she'd melt. Oh, you don't want to do that, Kai, dear. You might make a cross. And if the Snow Queen got a cross... <laughs> Boo! Huh? Oh. Oh. 
Spring came, then summer. Stop that! I can't see the pictures! Oh, me neither! Oh, aren't our roses beautiful this year? We should smell them, Kai. Go on, <laughs> if you say so, Gerda. I have a mind to go and tell that Kai what's what. Oh, me too. You? Yeah. Go on then. No, 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 I meant me too. I've only half a mind. Just like you. Oh. I don't understand. Why would Kai be so mean to me? But it was the speck of glass in his eye and the coldness in his heart that make him behave like this. Autumn came round, and Kai's behavior just got worse. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Look, Grandma, I'm all rickety and old, just like you. <laughs> Please, Kai, give me my spectacles back. You know I can't see without them. Oh, Kai's poor Grandma. That's the worst thing he's done so far. Do you no, that was nothing like her. No. What? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, this just isn't like him, Grandma. Maybe Kai thinks he's being grown up, dear. Some boys get like that. No, there's something very wrong with him. I just know there is. First time I've ever looked forward to leaving our lovely garden for the winter. That Kai has really lowered the tone of the neighborhood. Oh, I know. <coughs> no. By the time winter came along, Kai'd hardly any time for Gerda at all. <coughs> What's happened to you, Kai? You've hardly spoken to me since that day in summer, in our little rose garden. Well, I've got new friends now, and I don't like flowers anymore. They're messy and unmathematical. All right? <laughs> unmathematical? Oh, I'll explain it for you simply, shall I? You see, regular and orderly, in every detail. Perfect, like the Snow Queen herself, compared with this 
roses are just, well, ugly and untidy. Oh, hey, come on. Anyway, we're going sledding now in the Great Square. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's a sledge. Woo! Yeah, dare you to hop onto that one. Huh. Go for it, Kai. Huh. <laughs> hey, you little hooligan. Hey, mister! Slow down! Within minutes, they had reached the town gates. Stop! Let me off! Before long, night had fallen, and Kai had no idea where he was anymore. Clever boy. And so the Snow Queen flew Kai to her palace of ice. Her kisses had made him forget all about home. And the hobgoblin laughed out loud to have caused so much upset. So the months and years passed. Gerda, please. It's time you accepted he's gone. Some of the townsfolk think he may have, well, fallen in the river. <laughs> oh, Grandma! I know, dear. Now, why don't you try on your birthday present? Hmm? See if they fit. Now, there, there, dear. <sighs> Dead and gone. It's all too sad. I can't bear this any longer. Me neither. Let's move next. Oh. Oh. Kai, dead and gone? I don't believe it. Uh, <laughs> me neither. You know what, Swallows? You're right. I think Kai's still alive, and I won't believe he's dead till I have proof. Thank you, Swallows. Thank you for giving me hope. Oh, poor little girl. I only said that to cheer her up. Me too. Mr. 
Mr. River? Is it true? Did you take my best friend Kai away? <sighs> Here are my new red shoes. You can have them. If only you'd give him back to me. Well then, Mr. River. Catch! Oh! Away. Perhaps in return, it will carry me to where Kai is. Oh, right now, that's my only hope. Whatever are you doing in that boat all alone, child? The mooring rope came loose, and now I'm caught on the current. Oh. <laughs> there you are, dear. Oh. Safe and sound. <laughs> now you come inside and tell me all about yourself. friend hasn't passed this way but if you stay here a while maybe he'll come by soon thank you but I should really keep on searching no no you stay here child for I have often wished for a little companion and you'll be happy living here with me we'll see. As the old woman smoothed her hair with the magic comb, Gerda began to forget all about Kai. For the old woman was a witch, and not a wicked one. She just wanted to keep Gerda because she was lonely. Look at all our lovely roses, Kai. Our lovely roses. Mm. Roses, eh? Sorry, Roses, but I can't have any of you reminding Gerda of home or her little friend Kai. So, back under the ground you go. Please, I'll make it up to all of you later. Fresh horse manure every week. Works every time. <laughs> hmm, it's strange. I've been here weeks now, but I still can't help feeling there's something missing. Now, why should that be? Oh, why? I remember now. That's a rose. Yes, that's it. There aren't any roses in this garden. But why not? And, and why do I feel so sad all of a sudden? <laughs> oh. Yes, you're all lovely. And suddenly, the old woman's spell was broken. Oh.
mad old lady. Listen, you've all been under the earth. You, you didn't see my friend Kai there, did you? Oh, thank goodness. Then he's still alive. I'd better get going. Straight away. I thought you roses and I had a deal. <gasps> Please don't, don't leave me, Gerd. I was just lonely. I didn't mean any harm. Oh. Oh. Kai! Oh. 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 Gerd, please! Oh. <laughs> So Gerda ran, and all the time she had wiled away in the magic garden, finally caught up with her. She was now 13 years old. Gerda fell asleep in the snow. All she wanted to do was dream of Kai. For in her dreams, he didn't seem so far away. Goblin nearly laughed himself inside out to have caused such misfortune. Next, I'll tell you what eventually became of poor little Gerda and her beloved friend Kai. Now, now, don't look so worried. Everything turns out as it should in the end. But that's for next time. Until then. <laughs> Oh, yes, it is starting to get cold. But when the real cold comes, that can be a magical time. <gasps> Look, his head is too big. Oh, let me get that. That's it. No, not there, over there. There, that's better. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> ah, the most important thing. Oh, why the most important thing? So he can do this. <gasps> mm. Mm. You make me feel all tingly. Mm -hmm. May I have this dance? You may. <laughs> <laughs> Lovers. Look at them. Always running around together, holding each other's paws, being in love. Makes you want to bark. But they're beautiful. They're so mm. happy. Oh, please. Let's see how happy they are when they are squashed into the same kennel, having to share the same water dish. Go back to your own kennel. If she thinks she can trick me into sharing my water dish, she's really barking up the wrong tree. The lovers said they were all tingly. What's tingly? Oh, it's sort of hot and cold at the same time. Oh, but but what are hot? And cold. Cold is, well, you're cold. And hot is, 
Well, you'll find out soon enough when the sun gets at you. You know a lot, don't you? Oh, yes. I know it all. I've been around. Really? Where have you been? Uh, well, you know, the woods. And the field. And I used to live in the house. Until they put me out for biting the housekeeper. I mean, what do they expect? I'm a dog. And they were always saying she had corned beef legs. What's a house? That's a house. It's like a kennel, except it has a stove. Ah, the stove. It's always lit in winter and in summer. And you can lie in front of it, and beautiful smells come out of it. It sounds wonderful. Oh, you can see it from here, through that window. Hmm? Oh, there's nothing like lying in front of that stove. Oh, she's so beautiful. Eh? Her bearing, her aura, her radiance. Oh, I must be with her. But I'm rooted to the spot. A good thing, too. Do you know what would happen if a cold snowman touched a hot stove? It would be... Exactly. Tingly. What? No! Yes, hot and cold together, like you said. Tingly, like the lovers. I don't believe this. <laughs> but it was true. The snowman had fallen head over heels with the stove. <laughs> oh, stop! You're killing me! I can never stop loving her. She makes me feel so... I've never felt like this in my whole life. You were only born this afternoon. I'm going to stay awake all night and gaze at her beauty. Oh, pathetic. Well, I'm off to bed. <laughs> may I have this dance? You may. Another day, another frozen over water dish. must have nodded off. Not surprising, really. All that dancing tired me out. Dancing? Yes. Last night, my love, the stove, came to me, and we danced for hours. Oh, just when I thought this couldn't get any funnier. She's hmm? a wonderful oh. dancer. You fool, that was a dream. You imagined it. I did not. I was tingly, and so was she. I'm still tingly, and she... <gasps> She's disappeared! Of course she disappeared. You woke up. No! In the house! She's disappeared. Oh, that's just frost. Trust me, the stove is still in there. But I can't see her. How am I going to gaze lovingly at her if I can't see her? Oh, calm down. It'll melt off in a few hours. But I can't wait! I have to see her. I'm in love with her. No, you're not. I am! I know I am, because if I can't see her, I'm... I, I, I'm miserable without her. Oh, come no, on. Stop I, that. I just love her so much. Okay, I believe you. Just stop crying, will you? I have to see her. Oh, all right. I'll lick the window clear for you. Just stop crying. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh. <gasps> oh, look! Oh, oh. The poor dog's tongue has stuck oh, oh. to the freezing glass. Oh, oh, oh. 
I'll get some warm water. Oh, you poor thing. Don't worry. We'll get you free. Oh. <laughs> Happy now? Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're such a good friend. The stove and I will never forget you for this. Look, I can see her. Oh, she's as beautiful as she was last night. I'm so incredibly happy. And I'm tingling again. Does it really make you this happy just to look at the stove? It's not looking at her that makes me happy, though that makes me very happy. It's being in love with her that makes me happier than the happiest creature in the world. That's pretty happy. Oh. And so the snowman spent the days gazing at his love and the nights dancing with her. Oh. Oh. Until suddenly, the weather changed. <sighs> another day, another... Melted water? The thaw is here! <gasps> the snowman! Oh, oh good morning, dog. Uh, good morning. How, um, how are you feeling? Oh. Wonderful. Last night the stove looked so beautiful that I feel even more tiggly today than ever. Ah, um, I don't think that's the reason you're feeling tingly. Oh, but it is. Every day I'm more and more in love. Today I feel I could just float away on it completely. Are you sad, dog? My poor friend, what's wrong? Nothing. I mean, uh, nothing. Oh, I'm so happy, dog. I wish I could share it with you. I'm glad you're happy. Oh. strange the fire in the stove going out just like that for no reason lucky the weather has got so warm yes but look our beautiful snowman is gone oh here's your hair clip and your scarf but what's that black thing hmm, hmm. it's the shovel for cleaning out the stove hmm? so that explains it the snowman was built on the stove's shovel all the time I don't know how it could have got out here. It was definitely hanging on the stove last night. Hmm? It's a mystery. No, it's not. It's... it's true. Yes, that is very odd. I have no idea how that could have happened. Do you? No, the whole thing's quite mysterious, really. <laughs> I see your friend is gone. Yes. That's sad. He wasn't sad, though. He was happy. He was... He was... Uh, uh, say, I... I don't suppose you'd like to... Uh, go out for a bone sometime. I mean, if you want to, uh, you know, no pressure. I'd love to. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, great! I know it's only our first date, but there is a full moon tonight if you fancy going for a howl. I know where we can get really... So the dog had learned from his good friend that no matter how short, a life without love is no life at all. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Many years ago, there was an emperor who was so very fond of new clothes. He spent all his people's money on them. The farmers are clamoring for food and shelter after last month's thunderstorms. Oh. And we need nine more Lancer battalions if we're to restore order in the but east. That's not now. I'm being fitted for the victory procession. Sire, if we don't send reinforcements soon, there won't be a victory procession. Oh, very well. Oh, also, sire. There are two world-renowned tailors to see you. Why? I already have a court tailor, and everyone agrees he's the best in the Empire. And who can blame them, since they're my designs he's working from? These tailors do have letters praising them highly, Your Majesty, from the Doge of Venice and the Chinese Emperor. My two main rivals for title of best-dressed Emperor. Hmm. Show them in. Permit us to introduce ourselves, Your Highness. I am Monsieur Flynn, haute couturier par excellence. And this is Mr. Flamand von Terrible of the Avant-Garde. Hello. What are you wearing, Your Majesty? Oh. <laughs> that design is so old-fashioned. <laughs> and these fabrics talk about shoddy. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait. I see now. It's for a fancy dress ball, no? Of <laughs> course. And he's going as a clown. <laughs> oh, very funny, Your Majesty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is my victory uniform for the procession. You cannot be serious. But you will be world famous, no? As a laughing stock. <laughs> Come, Mr. Flam. The Emperor of China and the Doge of Venice were wrong. Our talents will not be appreciated here. Ha! They laugh their slippers off when we tell them. Wait! You could do better than this? <laughs> A blindfolded baboon could do better than that, sire. With wooden clogs <laughs> for thimbles. <gasps> They're insulting your work, Grandpa. Sophie, not here. If we were working for you, Your Majesty, we would make you the talk of every court in every corner of the known world. Uh, and beyond. We would weave you a suit of clothes using thread so fine, only the best and cleverest people would even be able to see it. Is that not so, Mr. Flam? Uh, like a man says, uh, with bells on. An outfit so fantastic, it would be invisible to any person who is not fit for the office he holds, <sighs> who is stupid, Ooh. or boring, or a lawyer. You mean, I'd know who to promote and who to have arrested? Just by asking them what I'm wearing. You would know your wise man from your fool. Your diamond from your brass farthing. Uh, I want this suit of clothes. Flim, Flam, you're hired. Ah, uh, one condition, sire. Whoever designed this monstrosity must be dismissed. At once! <laughs> but it was mine! Oh. I mean, but, but but he's been my tailor for 20 years. But it was the Emperor designed it. Grandpa, tell them. Shh. Oh, Sophie, please, 
It's not our place to say. But, Your Majesty, it's not fair. Minister, see to it. Now! and be gone. But... I am sorry. That's politics for you. <sighs> Sophie, you're right. It's just not fair. <gasps> oh, Your Majesty, I thought we talked about signing things when I'm not... Oh, too late. Go, then. Make me a suit which will make me the talk of the world for generations to come. Oh, we, we will, will, sire. We, we will. will. Minister, a seat of flim and flams every need. Money is no object. You mean you haven't fixed a fee, sire? Fee? Fee? We are artists. You're cheaping us with your talk of money. D -d 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 yes, Minister. Don't you know anything about high fashion? These men are artists. They don't care what it costs. They create. So see to it. The Emperor has spoken. Then again, a generous advance would be nice. Oh. As requested. One loom and all the fine fabrics we have in the palace. Gold, thread, ruby, emerald and diamante trims. The lot. Oui, oui, très bien. But we need more. More? But there's a fortune here already. You were your governor. We're artists, right? <coughs> oh, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> what am I to do, Sophie? No one at court will touch my work now the Emperor's dropped me. And all these fabrics are too dear for most people's pockets. Oh, something will come up, Grandpa. Read all about it. The Emperor's new tailors start work today. Are they really as good as the Emperor says? Me first. No, me. You, tailor. Minister. The Emperor's new couturiers require more supplies. I'll take all of this and whatever else you've got. Money's no object, apparently. Yes, Minister. I'll get my delivery team right on it. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> Ooh, back. <sighs> but what will we do if we can't see the new clothes? <sighs> of course we'll be able to see them. Nothing silly about us, is there? <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> It's Sophie again, from Rainbow Fabrics. Ah, more rich stuff, uh, très bien. But I carried all this stuff up here for you. Let me look at least. <laughs> By the looks of you, never. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah. I've a good mind to go down to that weaving room and, and, and order them to let me in. Oh, with all due respect, sire, what if they do? And you can't actually see anything. Ah, good point, Minister. I know. You go down and look at it. Me, Excellency? Yes. You! Well, what are you waiting for? 
Don't tell me you're scared of being shown up for a fool. Oh, of course not, Your Majesty. What do you mean? There's no more money. Not until I've reported back on your progress. The Emperor has spoken. <sighs> One moment. <laughs> and keep them closed till I say so. Now. <gasps> C'est magnifique, oui? You cannot believe your eyes, oui? I... I'm speechless. Oh, the craftsmanship, the way they fabric catch the light. Only a fool would not be struck down by its indescribable beauty, no? Oh, well... Words do fail me. Feel her! Do it! She is Chinese a spider silk, single-stitched. Soft, yes? <laughs> like a baby hamster's bottom, <laughs> no? I... I really wouldn't know. Come closer! See for yourself how Mr. Flam cross weaves the gold, silver, and ruby trim into trousers worthy of an emperor. Wasn't easy, Gov. Not with Fred's this fine like. Breaches. <laughs> Gold and silver with crosswoven ruby trim. Yes, yes, write it all down. Tell your emperor everything until his mouth waters. Yes, yes. If you wouldn't mind talking me through each piece individually, just so I don't forget anything. And don't forget, tell your emperor everything. <laughs> I will thank you. Oh. But I couldn't see a thing. What will I tell the emperor? Uh, I'm disappointed in you, minister. How could you be so unimaginative? I'm a politician. It's my job to be unimaginative. No matter. Your report was more than detailed enough to convince me Flim and Flam have created a sartorial triumph. It formed the Gossip Mongers, authorized the official leaks and rumors. The Emperor's new clothes are the eighth wonder of the world. Oh. The eighth wonder of the world. Phew. Still not. <laughs> Read all about it. A national holiday declared for Emperor's Victory Parade. Why so glum, Pumpkin? We've made all our money back and turned a profit. That's nice. Emperor's new clothes and sneak preview shock. Unofficial leaks minister reveals all. Oh, I just can't believe those rude, horrible men could dress the Emperor any better than you used to. Well, every expert who's seen it has declared it a masterpiece. From the Fashion Police Commissioner to the Minister for Tie Knots. Well, we'll see you tomorrow during the parade. Yes, Grandpa. Tomorrow we'll all see. Sad is the new happy. It's official. But it's so frustrating. Everyone, from the Minister for Beards to the Secretary for Odd Socks, has seen the Emperor's new clothes. And they are fabulous, sire. Yes. Unbelievable. You see? Everyone except the Emperor himself. That was the deal, sire. The Couturiers agree to let the Council monitor work in progress so long as you wait until the suit is finished. So, where is it? My victory parade is tomorrow morning, and I'm still waiting. Look, sire, 
down there in the weaving room. They're hard at work even now. You see, Excellency, they promised your suit would be ready for the parade, and it will be. And you're sure it's really as wonderful as everyone says it is? Oh, yes, Your Majesty. Never seen anything like it. We would hardly let you go out there looking like some kind of fool, now would we? Oh, no, 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 no. No. <gasps> but what if I cannot see the suit tomorrow? I might have to abdicate. <clears throat> I assure you, Excellency, tomorrow you will see exactly what everyone else sees, and only riffraff unfit for office will see any different. Yeah, yeah. Well said, that minister. Ah, you're right, of course. How could I be a fool? I'm the emperor. Your time. Yes, yeah, sorted, my in it. His Excellency, the Emperor. Yes, yes, yes. Just show me the suit. Well, where is it? Why, it is here, Your Majesty. Do you not see it? Maybe he can't see it. Maybe he is a fool. <laughs> Of course he can see it, Monsieur Flim. Now kindly show him the embroidery on the frock coat. Mr. Flim. Oh, exquisite color. That's to die for. <clears throat> uh, note the delicacy of the double cross stitching around your royal crest, sire. Uh, so fine you'd barely know it was there. Uh, that, uh, what can I say? I... I have to be honest. Uh, I cannot see a thing. <gasps> Depose him! No! Assassinate him! Not a single thing. Wrong with it. Hell, hell! is quite the most deliciously perfect garment I've ever laid eyes on. Here, here. Delicious. Perfection itself. Yes. So soft and light to the touch. Show me more, Monsieur Flim. Wait, Excellency. I have a better idea. What? Here? Now? In front of everyone? This is the most wonderful suit of clothes the world has ever known, Your Majesty. Only a fool would hesitate to put it on at once. Ah, uh, and I uh, wouldn't want to, uh, uh, to look a fool now, would I? The Imperial Sash. Oh yes, I remember that. Such bold design. Yes, those vivid colours. A peacock cloak for a top-notch bloke. Oh yes, that cloak. So daring, so radical. And the pièce de résistance, your special hat. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Yes, I can barely wait. Well, Minister, you can be honest. Does my bum look big in this? It uh, fits you like... like a second skin, sire. Yes! Yet such freedom of movement. The Emperor is pleased. Remove the screen. Yes. 
breathtaking, isn't it? <clears throat> so complex, yet so simple. It is time for the parade. And now the people will see the butterfly I have become. Let us give them the surprise of their lives. Time to oh, no. scupper like the wind, Mr. Flim, my petit flu. And shobbish, Monsieur Flim, me old china plate. <laughs> Isn't he? Shh! You don't want to be taken for a fool, do you? Uh, uh, uh. Well, they call it genius. And who am I to argue? I want to see! Rampa! Lift me up! Please! Oh, shush, shush, shush. <gasps> so minimal! Yet so primitive! Only a fool could fail to be impressed. Well, I'm no fool. Neither am I. What a great outfit. <laughs> but Grandpa, he's Starkers. Don't be silly, Sophie. It's just the modern look. Oh, but he's got nothing on. Look, everyone. Look with your eyes. Sophie, please. People will think we're, you know, fools or something. Right. The kid's right. Yes, he's got nothing on. <laughs> what are they chanting, Minister? The people seem to think you're <clears throat> not wearing any clothes, sir. Well, then surely the people are fools. <laughs> Of course. These letters of recommendation are forgeries. No, sire. We are the fools. For you are Starkers. <laughs> but everyone said how fabulous I look. And so you do, Excellency. For the human body is a beautiful creation and nothing to be ashamed of. <clears throat> Even yours. So, I've got no clothes on, and I've been exposed as a fool for everyone to see. They'll forget. They always do. In the meantime, Your Majesty, the show must go on. Soldiers, keep that canopy held high. Starkers is the new Your old contract back. Uh, the Emperor requires some new, new clothes and real ones this time. Oh, thank you, sir. What? After the way they treated us before. And I'll double your fee. Hmm. We'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> And that, believe it or not, is a true story.